How do you put a nose ring on a bowl? First you have to give the bowl a local anesthetic, then you take out the piercing tool and insert it into the bowl's nostrils to make the holes. Of course, you have to work a little harder when you do this. Usually veterinarians don't anesthetize bull when they put nose rings on them, but Ario is a special case who respects every animal. This is something that Holton, the owner of the bull, agrees with. Ario's relationship with Holton is not a normal one. In short, they are love rivals, as Holton's fiancé cancelled her wedding day because of Ario. He's just back from France and he's calling Ario to the farm to put nose rings on the cows. He's got an ulterior motive. Have you seen much of Helen? Uh, no, not a great deal. Come on, you're almost living in his ex-fiancé Helen's house. Just as he was about to put the nose ring on the bull, it suddenly lost its temper and kicked him to the ground. But Holton's return worried Helen because her family rented the farm from Holton. If he sells the farm or cancels his partnership with her, it puts her family in a dilemma. But her father said that if he did, then you were right not to marry him. Soon after, Holton came to her house. It's a little awkward for them to see each other now. After the whole annulment thing, Helen's family was too nervous to speak when he pulled out the contract. He had come to extend the lease on his farm to Helen's family for 20 years, and Helen and her sister would inherit the lease on the same terms. Helen was very grateful for his kindness. Holton didn't think it was necessary to do this before, because when he married Helen, the whole farm was theirs. But now that they've called off the wedding, it's imperative that this be done. That's what a man does. Not only that, but he gave Helen's family a purebred bull. After that, Holton left in a hurry. Helen went after him to thank him and to ask him to stay a little longer. But Holton says he's been away a long time and has a lot of real estate paperwork to do. So he turned around and left in style. Such a generous man is a rare gem. When Ario came to Helen's house, both Helen and Helen's father were talking about Holton. Holton was the captain of the recent cricket match. All of this fueled Ario's competitive spirit. It just so happened that Helen's father's cricket team was short of a player. So Ario, who had never played cricket before, volunteered to take on the big job. You're in. So Ario began to brush up on his cricket knowledge. Farnan, a member of the cricket team, began to teach Ario how to play cricket. But his old-fashioned, tedious way of teaching made him not even able to catch the ball. Tristan couldn't stand it any longer, so he took the bat and simply taught Ario what he had learned. And with a few pointers, Ario was able to catch the ball in no time. Tristan is an expert cricketer, having won the school championship at the age of 12. In fact, Tristan would have been perfect to sign up for the missing player in his team. But due to the current bad blood between the two brothers, Tristan refused to play. Soon after, the cricket match was held as scheduled. Just as the match was about to begin, one of the players couldn't play because his family's goat had run away. Now Tristan has to come on as a substitute to help out. This gives the village team a better chance of winning the match. It's not just a game, it's a match between two rivals. The town team is made up of young men. The village team is made up of older men. After the first game, the town team is leading by a whopping 138 points. Ario was also left reeling on the grass by Holton's vindictive batting style. During a break after the race, Mrs. Pumphrey asked Farnan for advice on what to do if the dog had recently been in heat. Farnan suggested that the dog be neutered. Mrs. Pumphrey felt that this would be cruel to the dog and that it would be better for him to let his nature out and enjoy life. Her words were a wake-up call to Farnan. Looking at Tristan, who was restrained by him, Farnan came to his senses. Meanwhile, Helen finds Holton and formally apologizes to him. It's actually quite sad that these childhood sweethearts didn't end up together in the end, but it's a terrible tragedy when two people know they're not right for each other and yet they still want to be together. Helen wished he'd take back the bull. Even though Holton gave it to her out of the goodness of his heart, Helen's family never accepts charity. Holton had no choice but to give her a friendly kiss on the cheek. The second game began. Tristan was on top of his game, catching every ball perfectly. The score went from 16 to 32 to 52. But the older guys were not up to it. They let in a couple of goals. Ario was the last to play, and it was the last ball of the game, thrown by Holton and caught by Ario. Ario only needs to hit the ball to win the game. And so the battle between the two rivals begins. Holton runs, puts all his hate into the ball, and throws his last pitch. Ario could have caught the ball, but he let it go. If you're so generous as a man, I'll let you win this time. Tristan knew Ario did it on purpose. Helen was one of the few who understood Ario. I felt old and win. I know, and I love you for it. Although he lost the game, he won Helen's heart. On the other hand, Farnan apologized sincerely to Tristan and gave him a suggestion. He asked Tristan to either take the money and go back to college to continue his license or stay here. Of course the choice is Tristan's. After so many misunderstandings, the two brothers have cleared the air. No one is perfect. Only by tolerating each other's flaws and understanding each other deeply can you truly enter someone's heart. This horse was about to give birth, but the uterus was twisted. A normal uterus is patent. Once it's twisted it means a foal is stuck inside, ultimately leading to the death of both the mom and the baby. 
Farnan got the call and grabbed the horse-killing gun because he had to plan for the worst. Then he rushed to the farm with Ario. The best thing to do was to flip the mare while holding the foal's feet in order to straighten out the twisted uterus. With time running out, Ario grabbed the foal's body and the rest of the group began to flip the mother. Halfway through the flip, Ario stops because the foal's feet are coming out of his grasp. After a few adjustments, the flip continues. The moment the uterus is positioned correctly, the mom's birth canal opens up. Ario pulls the foal out. The foal is on its feet in no time. What could be more touching than the safety of a mother and child? A moment when brothers, a couple, a father, a daughter, a mother and a son lean on each other in the midst of a breathtaking landscape. This is a scene you can only see in all creatures great and small. After delivering the horse, the two helping brothers left and Helen dragged her sister away. Then it was Ario's turn to ask Helen's father for permission to marry her. I'd like to marry your daughter but I'll come up to us, lad. As expected, the atmosphere between the two men was a bit awkward. After a few glasses of wine, Helen's father finally spoke up. Helen looked at Ario with the same look and smile that his dead wife had given him. He just suspected that Ario should be the one being taken care of rather than Helen being taken care of after her marriage. He would respect his daughter's choices because she was as stubborn as her mother. He then took a box out of the bag, which was Helen's mother's ring. My ears, it. Be honored. Thank you. Bye. Good lad. Shortly after, Ario's parents arrived in Derby Village. He settled them in a local inn and then drove all the way to pick up Helen. Just as he pointed out that there was something in the back of her dress, he suddenly got down on one knee and asked her to marry him. It's probably the first time he's ever done anything romantic. Helen shyly asked the daft beggar to get up. Tell me mums. Yes. Helen looked at her father with great emotion and understood what he was thinking. On the other hand, while Ario's parents are waiting at the clinic, his mother accidentally blurts out that Ario is going to quit his job, much to Farnan's shock. Meanwhile, Ario is back. The two of them don't expect to see their future daughter-in-law on their arrival. So his mother made plans for the future and prepared a king-size bed for Ario's room. Ario then finally spoke his mind. He decided to stay here, and not just because of Helen. Every day is different here, and his day-to-day -day work could be wrestling cows in the high dales or helping dogs caught in traps, neither of which can be replaced by modern city work. Helen also says that his arrival has made a difference to many people and that his work here does really matter. It's the people he works with that make the work so valuable, and Derby is his home now. He should be so proud of him. I certainly am, and I love him. Ario's father was very glad to hear this, and his mother said no more to persuade him to leave. Since their boy had a life of his own, they wished him nothing but happiness. Parting is always sad. Ario said he would go back to visit his parents sometime. But his mother replied, you don't visit your home, it's your real home and it will always be. Then his father got on a bus and drove away from the beautiful countryside. Even though it was hard, they wanted to make their child happy. That's the greatness of parents. That's the greatness of parenthood. Parenthood is watching your child's back as he or she walks away. You stand at this end of the road and watch him disappear around the bend. His back shows you there's no need to chase. Tristan was ready to go back to college to study parasitology and work on his career. And that concludes the second season of All Creatures Great and Small. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance. Adam.